Hi everyone, this is Dr. Yasudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Today we'll be diving into a topic that affects millions of people worldwide, scabies. Now I know it might make you feel a bit uncomfortable, but understanding this condition is crucial, especially with Europe seeing a shocking 200 to 300% increase in cases recently. Treatment resistant forms of scabies have also been reported. So let's break down everything you need to know about this common but treatable condition. We'll start with the basics. What exactly is scabies? Picture this, microscopic mites called Sarcoptis scabie, about the size of a pinhead, burrow under your skin. These tiny creatures may be very small, but they cause quite a bit of disturbance in our body. How do you know if you have scabies? The telltale sign is intense itching that gets worse at night, but usually does not affect the face. You might find yourself waking up scratching and that's one of the most characteristic symptoms. You'll also notice small red lumps under your skin, sometimes forming a distinctive curvilinear tract The dermatologists call burrows. These usually show up in specific areas, between your fingers, around your wrists, along the waistline, in the elbows, and the genitals in men is often affected. A single red spot on the penis should alert us about the possibility of scabies. Here are a couple of clinical signs that doctors look for during the diagnosis. Hardy sign is when there's crusting, which usually appears on the elbows, typically in severe cases. In babies, there's Denny's sign, where infants vigorously rub their soles together because scabies tends to affect their palms and soles. And here's an interesting observation. If you find yourself scratching during a doctor's visit, that's usually a clinical clue. Studies show that scratching during a consultation is more common with scabies than any other itchy condition. Let's talk about treatment. The most common first-line treatment is permethrin cream. But here's the catch. Recent studies show that it might be successful only in 30 to 35 percent of those who use it. That's why proper application is absolutely crucial. So let me walk through this process. Start by cutting your nails as some of the mites can be hiding there. Then take a shower and thoroughly wash your whole body. Now comes the important part. Apply the permethrin cream everywhere, and I mean everywhere, except around your eyes. Pay special attention to certain areas, like between your fingers, your wrists, between your buttocks, and your groin and genital area. Don't wash your hands after applying it. Leave the cream for 12 hours, usually overnight, then wash it off the next morning. Remember that all the contacts and those living in the house should be treated at the same time. Repeat the treatment after one week. Washing clothes and blankets is recommended in some guidelines using hot water at 50 degrees for at least 10 minutes. Do not share your clothes or towel during the treatment period. If you have pets, particularly dogs, check if they have any skin lesions. And if there are any, always take them to the vet. What are the alternatives if permethrin cream is ineffective? Benzyl benzoate can be used at a concentration of 10 to 25 percent and it's applied for 24 hours on days 1, 2 and 7, so three times, and exactly used as permethrin was used as I've mentioned before. It can cause some mild irritation in some people. Sulfur between 2 to 10 percent can be used for 24 hours on days 1, 2 and 7, but can have an unpleasant odor and potentially cause skin irritation. Some reviews suggest that you have to apply it daily for 14 to 21 days. It's helpful in resource poor setting as it is a very cost effective medication. One of the most effective treatments is oral ivermectin. Think of it as the star player in our treatment lineup. It's taken usually as two doses, one week apart at 200 micrograms per kilogram of body weight. It's very safe with only mild and transient side effects, including mild headache, nausea, and tummy upset. There's good evidence that combining oral ivermectin with topical permethrin can increase the effectiveness of treatment. One tip is to take oral ivermectin on an empty stomach for best results. That's when it's absorbed the best. 10% crotamiton cream is another agent that's available over the counter, and it's helpful for those who have sensitive skin because it's often used as a moisturizer, but it's less effective than the other medications which I've mentioned. It's applied on day zero, day one, day seven, and day eight, four times all over the body. Lindane cream and lotion was also used in the past, 
but due to potential side effects and ineffectiveness, it's usually avoided now. Let's look at a few novel agents that have been used to treat scabies. Spinosad, 0.9% suspension, is used to treat head lice and was recently approved by the FDA for treatment in scabies for those above the age of four years. It requires a single application for six hours. Skin irritation and dry skin are potential side effects. It began its life as an insecticide and it's available over the counter in some countries. For those interested in natural treatments, tea tree oil has shown promising results. Its active component is terpenine 4 all. It's quite effective against the scabies mite. Just make sure that you have a concentration below 20% to avoid skin irritation. The main side effect potentially is allergic contact sensitivity developing in some people who use it. The final novel oral agent is moxidectin, which already is widely used in veterinary medicine. It is superior to oral ivermectin as it has a half-life of 29 days compared to only 14 hours with ivermectin. Therefore, just one dose of 0.3 milligrams per kilogram is sufficient to cure scabies. It already is used for human onchocerciasis, so it's only a matter of time before we start using it for scabies as well. There are other newer treatments in the horizon for scabies, including vaccinations and immunotherapy, but they are still in the experimental stage. Now, here's something important to remember. Even after successful treatment, you might continue to develop itching for four to six weeks. Don't panic. This is completely normal and doesn't mean that the treatment didn't work. Your body is simply still reacting to the dead mites which is in your skin. Before we wrap up, I want to emphasize that scabies can affect anyone, regardless of hygiene or social status. There's absolutely no shame in getting it. If you suspect you may have scabies, reach out to your healthcare provider for proper diagnosis and treatment. That's all for today, everyone. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to share it with others. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments box below. I'll do my best to answer them in our next video. Thank you for listening and bye.